my talk. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Drombos, of course. It is Thursday, so it means it's time for our Thursday Trends episode. And I'm going to be flying solo on today's show, not by choice, but because my guest this week, unfortunately, had to cancel on me last minute. But y'all know how it goes. Uh, the show must go on. We're going to keep giving you these episodes regardless of uh, if my guest cancels or not. So I'm flying solo, breaking down some of these headlines from this last week. Now, we're going to be talking about a number of different things uh, kind of all over the, the spectrum, not as heavy as episodes that have been happening the last few weeks. So there's a, a, a positive there. Uh, we'll talk about, man, uh, we'll quickly touch on Donald Trump getting indicted and, and finally getting uh you know, held accountable for some of his actions, uh, potentially here. We'll, we'll quickly touch on that. Uh, we'll talk about these new Instagram uh, blue checks, the verification that's happening that you can um, now pay monthly fee to have a blue check. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about Rosie Perez and some comments that she recently made about the entertainment industry, specifically Hollywood, and some of her experiences and what she feels like she wants to see more of going forward. And on a positive side of things, we will talk about a a good moment in Hollywood that's happening right now in the superhero space. A, a new movie trailer was just released by DC. So we'll talk about that in the Mi Gente segment. And we'll also squeeze in another positive story. Our guy, Bad Bunny, um, you know, he's been, you know, he's been on the hot seat recently for his dating preferences, uh, you know, as of late. But he he never fails to put on for his people. So we'll talk about a secret message that he left in his uh, cover that he did for Time magazine. So we'll talk all about that. But first and foremost, as we always do, let's just dive right into the nonsense from this last week in a segment we call for the people in the back. Say a lot for the people in the back. All right, so we'll first and foremost quickly start with Donald Trump. And I don't want to harp on this too long because I feel like all I do is talk about this fucking person. Um, and and TikTok is very triggered when you mention uh, the Republicans or their boy Donnie, uh, which is a whole nother hilarious story. But anyway, Donald Trump, as I'm sure you have seen at this point, um, has officially been indicted. He is officially the first ever ex-president to be indicted. He had to head over to New York City on uh, on was it Tuesday of this of this week. Of course, as I said, the first ever criminal arraignment of a former U.S. president. Our buddy Donnie was indicted on 34 felony counts of business fraud. Now, this is all stemming from the charges related to a hush money payment to, uh, that his former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen made to adult film star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election. Uh, now they are, are the, the real charges around this is the money that he was using. It possibly could be election fraud if he was using um, the donated money, the election funds that he raised. If he used that money to pay off the, the porn star Stormy Daniels, um, that is illegal. It's fraud. Listen, I, I don't the way things go. I don't I don't see this man sitting in, in handcuffs in a jail cell doing his time, uh, you know, it, 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 at all. I, I really don't. There's a lot of other cases possibly being brought up against him. We'll see what happens. But even with this one, they're talking about how it, it's probably not going to start till maybe next year, the top of next year. So reality is, you know, this may go right into the presidential election and might have to wait till afterwards. So who, who knows? It's a lot of speculation, obviously, by the talking heads on MSNBC um, and and every other news outlet out there. But uh, I I don't have too much faith. The only thing I can say is this. I'm I'm happy that it finally proves that nobody is above the law, right? He still now has to answer for alleged crimes that he he may have committed. And he has to sit there and go through the whole process just like anybody else. Now, obviously, because he's an ex-president, because he is a, a uh, you know, wealthy human being, he doesn't have to go through the same process that you and I would. But, you know, he he still has to answer to the court system and, and, and plead his innocence, um, you know, to a, a jury. So, there, there is there is that, which is on the positive side of things. And I'm sure many of you have seen the shit show videos of, of New York during that time, the protest happening, 
Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene showed up in New York to protest. Uh, George Santos, both of which were, were ran out because they couldn't handle the uh, pressure from the people of, of, of New York um, laying in on them. Just a, a weird shit show of like, it, it's a, a, a microcosm of the world that we exist in right now living in this country of just like, I don't know, man. I, I try to, I've been like trying to steer away from politic heavy recently I've, I've had a nice break where i haven't been doing my tv show we're on a hiatus so i haven't had to dive into like the politics head first and i've been a little bit more detached than usual but yeah when you when you go back in and you start you know, i've had like this tiktok video that's been going off and like republicans have been in my comments lately and it's just scary and it's scary because these people are so fucking fanatical and so unhinged that they literally will make excuses for everything and like they're so out of their mind and and like invested in what they believe in that like it literally at times will make me question if I'm the crazy one, right? And and obviously you have to check yourself, but like it's it's a, just a really scary time period to be living in. And I know I've always been trying to like extend the hand to the other side. And we talked a bit about this last week. And it, it's just becoming increasingly harder and harder when people aren't actually having rational ideas or arguments. It's all based upon this obsession with this one man. And it's just scary. And now the latest thing is everybody's destroying their Budweiser, Bud Light cans uh, because apparently Bud Light uh, had a, a, a transgender uh, spokesperson. So so now <laughs> the the new thing is, remember how they were burning Nikes at, at, at one point? Um, and... <laughs> And 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 uh, and they were you know, laying their, their Nikes on fire because of uh, of Colin Kaepernick, the the partnership they did. Now they're like running over Bud Light cans with their trucks and like throwing the the cans in the garbage. And everybody's buying Coors Light now. And like the 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 irony of all this, and again, it's because Bud Light has a partnership with a trans influencer um, by the name of Dylan Mulvaney. And and and. The irony is that like the liberals get called snowflakes and we're like, oh, we're cancel culture this, cancel culture that. When the 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 Republican fucking, I don't know, party, the obsessed fanatics, they literally will cancel any brand that does anything that they don't agree with. Like that the, it's the irony of this argument. I don't like this is why you can't ha have a, a real conversation because the hypocrisy. And their ability to turn a blind eye to their own hypocrisy makes it really difficult to have any sort of real conversation. You guys complain that the left, the liberals, are all about canceling people and that they're sensitive snowflakes who uh, can't exist in this world where people have different opinions than themselves. Yet on the other side of it, you guys are publicly making videos as grown ass people, throwing out your cans of Bud Light and running them over. Uh, or burning your Nikes because they partnered with Colin Kaepernick. Is that not cancel culture? Is is that not you being a sensitive snowflake that somebody made a decision, a, a partnership that you didn't agree with? And now that means that you, you know, you have to cancel them. Is that not what that is? You're offended by the fact that they have a different opinion than you. That sounds very snowflake ish to me. But, you know, what what, what do I know? Right. I'm, I'm doing this show from uh, my mom's basement, as everybody says on TikTok. Right. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Moving, moving on from this. Oh, one more thing also. The irony of you guys driving over Bud Light cans in your Ford truck that did a campaign supporting Pride Month and the LGBTQ plus community and then going to the store and buying Coors Light, who also had campaigns promoting Pride and the LGBTQ plus community. Like the idiocracy is on full display and you are far too dumb to just recognize how hypocritical and idiotic you are. It's it's just a scary time to to be living in. It, that, that's all that I could uh, uh, all that I could say. Anyway, uh moving on. Something uh outside of politics completely, a little bit lighter, but let's talk about Instagram's uh blue checks, right? Now, Instagram has unveiled this new program where you can subscribe. It's like $14.99 a month, and you can be verified just like your favorite celebrities, right? And they they made a crazy amount of, of money. I'm going to look at this real quick. I want to look it up um, because Meta, the, the company who owns Instagram, made a ton of money. So I'm trying to find the number. I can't find it here, but it, it was something crazy. But either way, 
I'm sure all of you have seen people popping up on your Instagram feed and everybody's fucking verified now. There's blue checks left and right. And a lot of people have opinions about it. At first, I was calling people haters, uh, you know, because I, I thought if you're using your social media for like a business purpose, if you are trying to build a personal brand, a brand in general, this makes a lot of sense. It, it, it allows you to have a legitimacy that makes people want to do business with you in some sort of way. But then I just started seeing that everybody and anybody was getting the, one of these marks and like anybody can sign up for it and, and literally just paying now all of a sudden you're verified. And when I started seeing how many people were doing it, it really made me realize that we live in a world where people are starving for validation in the worst way possible. And I'm not judging anybody for for this. You know, I'm not trying to shame anybody. I, I just think it's like almost like a, a, a commentary on the state of the world that we live in today. And and we're all products of of the environment that we have been around, right? Products of of growing up with social media and the sort of social currency that has come along with, you know, followers and likes and and all these different things, you know. And and the idea that we all can now have a platform and sort of like get a taste of of celebrity, you know, all of that is incredibly intoxicating, you know, present party included. But what's scary to me is it's like a case study for how insecure most of us are. That we're searching for this outside validation because we don't know how to love ourselves. And I know people are like, oh, it's not that serious. It's just an Instagram page and a, and a check mark. And yeah, on the surface, it is that. But dig a little bit deeper. Why are we posting our best pictures? Why are women posting these, you know, silly selfies of, of them, you know, doing kissy face on their fucking stories? And we're showcasing every single place that we go, our dinner, our food, our drinks. You know what I mean? Like every little thing, every step of, of our lives, we're sharing it with the world. Right. It's, it's in an effort. To make others envious of us or to feel like, you know, we, we have a, a one up on someone else and therefore feeling good about ourselves. And I don't think everybody is like has this evil genius inside them that they're, they're even conscious of, of that's what they're doing. But you're showcasing this highlight reel of your life because you want others to give you feedback on it, positive feedback, validation that your, your life is incredible and they're jealous of it or they wish that they were doing what you're doing in that moment, right? Like this inability that we have to live in the present moment and just enjoy it and to keep it personal, right? I, I think that there's something really interesting about the fact that our most intimate moments, you know, vacation time with loved ones, you know, time spent with friends and family, like we're, we're so eager to share those with the world and with strangers, right? Like we, we don't even keep anything for ourselves anymore. You know, it, it, it's really interesting to me. It's like we sacrifice living in the moment and our personal relationships. We sacrifice all of that just for some sort of ego boost that we might get from, from somebody, you know, telling us that they're jealous or somebody telling us congratulations or, or, or whatever it might be, right? It's, it's just a really scary, I think, mindset or, or normal that we're getting into where we literally are constantly looking for outside validation, right? The idea that I'm doing something cool, I just accomplished this. My first thought is let me run to my social media and broadcast it for the world so that I can get that quick dopamine hit that ego boost, right? And it's like we, we are unable to even just sit in the moment and validate ourselves and enjoy what we're doing for ourselves, right? We need that outside cosign, that outside validation to really feel like we're doing something good or to really enjoy what, what experience we're having, right? Like it's not as enjoyable if the rest of the world doesn't cosign, you know, the moment that we're in. And again, I'm not above this. I don't really enjoy social media as much as many people. I, I personally view it as a tool for my personal brand and building my business. But I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't enjoy the positive feedback I get on certain posts or, um, you know, 
uh, people telling me I'm an inspiration or any of those things, right? I'm I'm enjoying that ego boost just as much as anybody else. So I, I just think it's like we have to kind of turn the mirror on ourselves and look at why our first instinct is generally speaking to run to social media every time we feel like we have something that is worthy of of you know that is something that others would would value right rather than just like again living in the moment keeping things personal just for us just for those around us you know um, keeping our intimate moments intimate it, it, it's just a really i don't know it's it's a really interesting case study on the, the current world that we live in and and things like this blue check you know the the fact that so many people are are signing up and and spending their hard-earned money just to get this blue check next to their name and again it's not expensive it's like 14.99 a month but either way what is the point if you're just using instagram for fun to share stuff you know with your friends and you know document your life why do you need a blue check mark for that right like this this speaks to the insecurity of the world that we live in the the fact that people want to be a part of something the fact that they want to be as close to celebrity as possible right because this is something that was held off only for people of influence or for celebrities for such a long time and now you get to have your taste of it and again it's all outside external validation and i don't think you're a bad person for signing up for this i just again think this is this is like social commentary on the state of the world that we live in. People are willing to buy validation. People are so desperate for validation. They have no problem quickly spending their hard earned money just to get a taste of it. And it's the current world that we live in. And again, I'm not above it all. I fall into this trap as well. But, you know, for as as much positive as social media can can bring us and the connections and networking, the brand building, all that stuff, I love it for that. There, there is also like 10, 20 years from now, we're just gonna see like a documentary that shows you like the downfall of our, our society to a degree. Um, if we keep going down this path of like creating like mini narcissists, right? Like we're, we're, we're just living in a world that like rewards narcissism and where people are more than willing to pay to give into their own personal narcissism and i don't have all the answers this is just me spewing my own commentary on it um and and maybe i'm looking at it from too deep of a perspective i don't know but i look at things like this and i know there's a story just beneath the headline and all of this is like an analogy for the current state of the world that we live in and um again maybe i look at things too deep but I think there is something to that and it's a scary scary thought that we're all so hungry for outside validation um that we literally will jump onto any any trend any uh, opportunity just to feel like we're a part of the conversation because we we can't possibly find that love internally it's it's scary but anyway we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later on in the in the show and then i quickly want to talk about uh something completely different left of, left from what we're talking about here um we're going to talk about hollywood and, and latin representation and you have rosie perez who's obviously a legend and she's speaking out about hollywood studio execs and and sort of this weird line that she's had to walk and we've talked about the idea of hollywood and representation so much on the show but i want to quickly just kind of touch on the story from we are me too and uh you know, she was talking about how, quote, we want to do things that are specific to our culture, our story. And she references this Colin Farrell movie where he was playing an Irish guy and it was an Irish story. And, and she was saying how beautiful that was. And like, that's all that we're asking for as, as a Latin community is to be able to share our stories and have our stories embraced in that, that same way. And she talks about how she always got mixed messages from executives in Hollywood you know, um, that the roles studios offered her are often wildly disparate and and uh, like Hollywood doesn't know exactly what to do with her. And then she says, quote, and when we do get our stories told, we have some executive who knows nothing about who we are as people. And and she says, uh, then they're like, can you spice it up a little bit? 
And she says, you want to punch those people in the face. It, it is interesting. And I've been dipping my toe into this world a little bit more. And I haven't had a, a, a negative experience just yet. But you can see it to a degree. Everything's in comparison or reference to something else. And maybe that's just the nature of the industry. But you do have people, you know, when I look at the people who are at the executive level that we're pitching ideas to, I'm trying to convince you or tell you my story. And even if you're open and receptive to it, you know, it's impossible for you to completely get the importance of it, right? So that's why you'll have these executives saying things like, can you spice it up a little bit, right? To them, it's harmless. To them, it's just feeding into their own notion of what a Latin person, or in this case, a Latin woman is. But to us, it's you not recognizing how diverse and how vast our stories and our people are, right? Um, and and then, and then she actually even goes on to say, um, however, if things get too honest in the audition room, executives and producers often ask her to, quote, pull it back and not offend or challenge the audience too much, right? And it's this idea. I, lo I love that, that last term, and not in a literal sense, but I think it's something to highlight. Don't challenge the audience too much. So that means like, yeah, we want you to like share your Latinness, but like, you know, don't make the audience uh, have to think a little bit, right? Don't be too culturally accurate to the point that they're not um, exactly hip to what's going on. And it's like, man, there are so many white stories that I can't relate to, but I still would watch a movie like I can't relate to middle America, white America growing up on a farm, but I've seen plenty of movies that, you know, center around. Um, someone in a, a farm and I've adapted and challenged myself to figure out what the fuck their life is like based upon what's happening in the movie, right? But for us, no, we have to be on the nose, very obvious. We can't be um, too authentic because then again, people can't relate to it. And it's just a, a story is as old as time. And, you know, things are are changing, I think. I think you're seeing a lot of different stories being brought to life, a lot of things being told far more authentically. Um, a show like This Fool is a, a great example of that, you know, so so things are, I think, moving in the right direction slowly. Um, but it's it's important to be aware of, of kind of the state of things from the past and even things that currently go on. Um, and, and also like beyond just actors and, and things like that, like we just need people in, in executive roles who understand these things. And um, these studios, you know, not that they really give a fuck, need to have more diversity when it comes to executives. So they have people who actually can truly speak to, you know, a project and understand the importance of certain nuances and not just, uh, you know, their own preconceived notions uh, of, of looking at a community from afar of, you know, what what the audience is going to want. Um, yeah, so I just thought an interesting kind of conversation to, to touch on when it comes to Hollywood, especially because in our Mihenta segment, we're going to be talking about a, a Hollywood movie that has gotten it right, it seems like, which I'm, I'm really excited about. So we'll talk about that. Uh, for me, hit the segment. Mijente. All right, so I, I'm not admittedly the biggest like superhero movie fan, but I'm going to be supporting the hell out of this one. You had the trailer for the DC movie uh, Blue Beetle, and that was dropped. The trailer was dropped uh, this week, and it had Solo Mariduena, uh as as uh, the the lead character. He plays the the superhero Blue Beetle. And what's what's cool is like he's unapologetically a Latin kid, Latin family. George Lopez is is his father um, in in the movie. And to me, what's also really, really beautiful about it is uh, this was actually supposed to be released on HBO Max. But now it's actually having a theatrical release. Right. And it's directed by a, a, a Latin director, um, Angel Manuel. And it'll be in theaters on August 18th, right? So, I don't know, just, just a beautiful moment. Even if I'm not a fan, like I said, of superhero movies. Directed by a Latino, uh, Latino lead. It's a Latin, a story about a Latin family, right? They didn't just whitewash uh, this kid and, and pretend that he wasn't actually Latin. Like, you have somebody like George Lopez, who's unapologetically, you know, um, Mexican, right? At the end of the day, playing the father. And even though he's had some problematic things recently. It's still a, a beautiful thing to see, a story to be told like this. and you know, we were just talking about things in Hollywood and, and then not getting it right. You know, we have to support movies like this one because this is, is sadly the, the test that continues to happen, right? Where if this movie is not successful, 
they're going to say things like, you see, this is why we can't be rushing to, to have inclusion, that Latin leads aren't universal enough for people to want to support it, all of the above, right? So we need to support movies like this one. And again, even if you're not a big superhero fan like myself, like this is incredible to see. It's a gigantic moment, especially somebody uh, long, especially somebody young like like uh, Solo uh, Sholo, uh, here leading leading the cast. Um, you might know him from uh, Cobra Kai. He played like uh, the main the main kid on on Cobra Kai. He was a part of uh, he played the main kid on Cobra Kai. Uh, I can't remember what the, the dude's name is. I, I had to turn that off after a couple of seasons. It stopped making sense anyway. Um, but just a beautiful moment for him and and I think for Latinos in general to be in this space of like superhero movies and to have representation for it to be unapologetically Latin, I think is beautiful. Now, the other thing I want to talk about before we hit the segment on a positive side of things, you had Bed Bunny, who <laughs> I've seen the memes running around. There was a, a video of him and Kendall Jenner on a horse and now everybody's making it into a, a novella. Um, so he's still getting shit for that relationship. But he did leave a secret message for Puerto Rico on the cover of his time on the Time magazine cover that he did. Now, he's on the cover of Time magazine. And it's the first in Spanish in 100 years. Um, and and besides making history, his cover, the, the art actually has a subliminal message that references um, another famous Puerto Rican, Ramon Emeterio Betances. And if I mess up that last name, I'm sorry. Uh, but he's the father of, of Puerto Rican independence, the Puerto Rican independence movement. And Bad Bunny is recreating as far as his look goes, recreating a painting of of uh, Ramon. And this is why you have to love Bad Bunny. Just sneaking little things like that in there, moments that he didn't have to do. He could have just showed up there wearing his signature Adidas or or whatever look he felt like, but he made it a point to have a message in everything that he does. And that's what I respect so much. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't even think I, if I was ever, you know, given the opportunity to be on the cover of Time magazine, I don't think I would have thought of of that, you know, like, I don't think I would have been like, oh, how can I insert a subliminal message here? Like, my brain doesn't work that way. And in retrospect, I would have been like kicking myself like, damn, I should have done that. But I think it's just beautiful that that's the way his mind works, that he's always trying to, you know, put his people on and be an amazing uh, representative for the culture, for the community. Um, so so shout out to him. I just wanted to, to honor that and hint this segment. Um, two positive things this week. So we're, we're moving up in the world. We're, we're hopefully bouncing back from some of that negative shit uh, we've been having to deal with these last couple of weeks. Now, with that said, I want to get y'all's take on one of these topics that we've been talking about. We'll talk about this Instagram blue check mark thing uh, for our Ask a Gringo segment. Ask a Gringo. Uh, I have a question. All right. So for this week's Ask a Gringo, I want to ask y'all's thoughts on these Instagram blue checks, right? At EJ Dramas on Instagram. And I did find the number. Instagram actually sold 44 million blue checks in one day, which made them a whopping $660 million, right? So 44 million people in one day and $660 million in profit for uh, Instagram. It shows you the vanity of the world that we live in today, the obsession with being close to fame and celebrity and the validation that so many of us are searching for and social media just provides this like intoxicating pathway towards that, right? Towards those quick little dopamine hits um, and us forgetting that it's just like this is an inside job, but and myself included. Uh, I don't know why that number just depressed me. 44 million in, in fucking one day. That's insane. $660 million. Literally just you want to be become rich, just find a way to profit off of people's need for validation and their, their own vanity. But that's my own opinion. I want to get y'all's take. I, I simply just asked, what do y'all think about this whole Instagram checkmark thing? Thoughts on, on IG letting people pay for blue checks? And a bunch of y'all responded to this one. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get into into a few of the responses on today's show here. Now let's see. At Dario underscore Valley says, "Brilliant if you're Instagram." Other than that, a tad silly. Yeah, I agree. I think the only people actually really getting any sort of uh, you know positive reaction to this is Instagram, and it's because it's going into their pocket. Like now, anybody has a blue check mark, 
You're literally just paying to look at, at a blue check and, and to feel validated. And actually, even before this, man, I've, I've seen people have like parties for the fact that they got verified. Like it, it's a weird fucking world that we live in. And listen, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I said I hadn't applied for verification before and, and uh, been offended that I hadn't gotten it, right? But that also is like, it just shows you the power of, of stupid things like this when they create these like caste systems, right? Like, and I wanted to be a part of it. And I'm somebody who's like, you know, try to be very self-aware and, and all of the above. And I get caught up in it, right? So I'm not saying this as somebody who's above it, but man, it's it's literally they're just creating these systems to like make us feel like we are are not enough and we need something else and we're just desperate to be a part of the conversation. It's 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 just weird. Let's see. At M dot chance says, unchecked capitalism destroys the middle class. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like a good pun there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh yeah, this is is it is capitalism at its finest. And you're literally capitalizing off of, again, the vanity and need for validation. And that is like a well that will never dry up, I guess, at the end of the day, specifically because we have things in place like social media, which are just now so, so much like integrated into our everyday lives. Right. These are things that are a part of everything that we do. It's how we pass the time when we're bored or we're in an awkward situation. Like and it's it's how we get our message out there to the world, how we see what our friends are doing, all of the above. Right. Like, so this well is is never ending and people are just going to continue to figure out how to profit off of others needs for validation, their insecurities, their their want for, um, you know, to touch celebrity in some sort of way. And it's just a sad world that that we live in, that it's so easy for people to take advantage of it because we make it so easy. Right. Because rather than doing the work on ourselves, rather than doing that hard work and 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 really just like, you know, Figuring out how to love ourselves. That's not easy. I'm still getting there. I'm in therapy. I'm doing all these different things to really get to a place where like, I don't need to have the idea of outside validation even be a factor into what I do, right? But I'm doing the work. And unfortunately, so many of us refuse to do that, are scared to do it, just want the easy, quick dopamine hit. But again, like this means nothing at the end of the day. Now, actually, because so many people signed up, you even look silly you're having, you know, one of these things next to your name uh, b because we all know it's meaningless. Right. And I'm not shaming again. I've been there before, you know, and I have felt slighted when I didn't get verified by Instagram. Right. But it, it is just, man, it's scary how easy it is to profit off of people's insecurities. It, it really is. Let's see. Last one at Emily Rose says takes away any meaning of the check. People were pissed when Elon did it. So why copy Twitter? Yeah, I think two things. You're right. It does take away the meaning of the check because, you know, if everybody has a fucking check mark now, like what good is it to, you know, have a person of influence that they're verified? Everybody's verified at this point. Now, on the flip side of that, maybe that is a good thing. Maybe that takes away if we're all fucking, you know, uh, special. That means nobody's actually special. And, and uh, that was a, a line that I was taking from a joke that, that somebody made in the, the comments. But maybe that is a good thing. Maybe it levels the playing field that we're all not that we're all on the same level and that none of this actually means anything. Right. That's a positive spin that you could see out of it. I doubt that society is going to be going down that route and adapting that mindset. But that could be a positive way you look at it. But, yeah, I think it, it takes away any real credibility from the actual check mark, And that is fair to say, why did we give Elon so much shit? But nobody seems to care when Instagram is doing it. Right. Yeah. Elon. Elon seems like he's batshit crazy. But. He's profiting off of the same thing. People's vanity, people's want for validation at the end of the day. And and uh, it's just, I don't know, it's fucking stupid. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, there's no other way around it. You know what I mean? Like if there was, like it, everybody is validated now. Everybody's verified. Everybody, everybody's the same. Maybe that's the, again, the, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. Maybe that's the good thing now is that these influencers with their blue check, theirs becomes meaningless as well now. And maybe this whole, uh, cast system we we had created uh begins to erase itself again i don't think so there's gonna be a new thing that like ultra verified or something it's gonna be a fucking you know black check mark and that means that you're like truly verified and you're the real deal and, and and that'll be the next thing that we're all chasing after they'll, they'll just keep feeding off of this endless supply of, of people's need for validation at the end of the day anyway at these dramas on instagram gonna be part of these conversations now with that said let's tie everything we talked about today in a neat little boat in a segment we call conclusion stew Time for conclusion soon. Mm. 
All right, so we touched on a lot of different things today. I'm going to just quickly kind of go through it. I mean, I'm not going to harp on Trump too much. I, I just hope that this is like the start of everybody gets held accountable for their actions and nobody's above the law. Hopefully that this sets that precedent. Um, probably not. His base is more galvanized than ever. Probably they're going to use this as like some sort of leverage to make him a martyr, right? Whatever. Anyway, uh, then let's talk about these IG blue check marks real quick. I think we've said all that we need to say about it, but it's literally just capitalism, you know, uh, taking advantage of people's need to want to be seen, to be validated, to be close to celebrity. Um, and, you know, there's always going to be that need and, and companies like this are going to take advantage of it and they're going to make $660 million in one day uh, based upon people's insecurities and want to be a part of something. <sighs> it's listen, self-love, guys. I mean, I, it sounds corny, it sounds kumbaya, but but, you know, the path towards loving yourself and not needing outside validation is a beautiful thing. Like it all starts within. That blue check mark might make you feel good today, but it once now that it's become a, a stupid thing that everyone makes fun of, you're back to not feeling great about yourself, or you're back to needing more validation. That's the point. All of this shit is like fleeting, and it's not sustainable. The only thing that really is sustainable is when you do the actual hard work and figure out ways to truly love yourself and understand that it's an internal job. I'm on that process right now. It's not easy, but. It's a lot better than chasing these fleeting moments. I can promise you that. Now, when we talk about Hollywood, we had Rosie Perez kind of talking about um, the idea that sometimes she had to hold back her Latinness because people would, execs would say, oh, uh, you know, the audience, uh, you know, the audience might be too challenged to have to, uh, you know, figure out what's going on if they're not culturally aware of these things. And again, these are, this is feedback that we only get as people of color, as Latin, as Latin community. Um, on the positive side of things, though, Things are changing, it seems like, to a degree. And you have DC releasing a superhero movie, Blue Beetle, led by a, a, a Latino cast. It is a, a, a story about a Latin superhero from a Latin family, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the fact that it was supposed to be released on HBO Max and now they're giving it a theatrical release is beautiful because we saw what happened with Batgirl uh, where it got canned. Um, so I think it was Batgirl. Yeah, Batgirl got canned. And, and didn't even see the light of day. So it's nice that this is actually going to get a full-on theatrical release. All the bells and whistles that come along with it is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And also, Bad Bunny, listen, I know he's on a lot of people's shit list right now for his um, dating preferences. Um, but you got to respect how calculated this man is. He's on the cover of Time magazine, first uh, the first in Spanish in 100 years. And he is recreating a photo from someone who is the father of Puerto Rican independence, the father of the Puerto Rican independence movement. Um, and he had enough foresight to think about, this is how I want to present myself. Again, always putting on for his people, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I respect the hell out of that. So with that said, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, man, first of all, big shout out to everybody that's been supporting the movement. Uh, Just Be, my book, the merch. It's been crazy to see that. I've been sending books out. I've been um, setting out shirts and, and sweaters and all that stuff. It's been amazing. I appreciate y'all. Just be.nyc. You can pick up the book. You can pick up the merch. Um, I appreciate you guys for the support. Street Stoic, first season just ended, but you can go binge all 60 episodes, get that daily motivation, that daily inspiration, wherever you find podcasts. And that's it. Have an amazing weekend. I'll be out here working on some stuff around my house. I couldn't be more excited. That's how I know I'm getting old. Um, but I uh, hope y'all have an amazing weekend. I'll catch you on Tuesday with a brand new episode. So then stay safe and talk soon. Peace.